Hey everybody, today's message is going to be a little different, maybe a lot different than what I normally share. And I, I come to this message with, with a great sense of urgency. I was uh, really shocked by something I heard in a message a couple Sundays ago at our church at Fresh Wind that Pastor Colin had shared. And then it was uh, shared again last week by a fellow named Josh Labac who did the message. And it's, it's uh, information from a study, a demographic study by the Barna Group. Now, the Barna Group is, is probably the top group in the country in terms of uh, what's happening in the culture, with the church, Christianity, demographics, those sorts of things. And they have done a study on, on the top places in the country where, where there are de-churched people, the top 20 places in the country where people have become de-churched. Now, what's the defin definition of deep church? Let me share this with you. Deep a deep church person is someone who is formally very, somewhat, or minimally active churchgoers, but have not attended a church service in at least six months, include ex excluding events such as a wedding or a funeral. It's been my experience, if somebody steps away from the body of faith for about six months, they're probably not coming back, at least not anytime soon. But here's the thing that really gives me urgency. Let me just share some of the top 20 places where this has happened. Number one, number one, San Francisco to Oakland and San Jose, California. A lot of these are not just a city, but a region. The number one most de church place in the country is San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose, California. Number two, most de church place in the country is Boston, to Manchester, Massachusetts. Number three most de church place in the country is Seattle, the area of Seattle to Tacoma, Washington. Now all the, th all the places in, in this demographic study are large metropolitan areas, except for number 14. And I don't know if you'll ever guess what number 14 is. The 14th most de church region in the country is Traverse City, Michigan to Cadillac, Michigan. I saw that and my jaw about hit the floor. And, and, and I find it to be so, so troubling for a couple of reasons, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I think of the importance, if, if, if we're believers, the body of Christ, and participating in the body of Christ is so, so important. We read in Hebrews, don't neglect the fellowship, don't neglect coming together with other believers. That's where we grow and that's where we encourage others. We were never met in, in, by Jesus to, to live out our faith in isolation. I think of Paul nearing the end of his life and he talks about how he was steady all the way through. I have finished the race. I have fought the good fight. Now it's time to receive the reward. I think of so many people that are stepping away and, and just walking away long before they get to, to, that, to that end. I want to hear Jesus say, after going through my faith for the long haul, well done, good and faithful servant, and I pray that you want to hear that as well. This, this is my number one concern, is for the individual believer and, and the consequences for, for stepping away. Secondly, um, I'm very concerned about what this de-church movement means for the state of the church in our nation. I'm in the process of reading a book written by Eric Metaxas, right here it is right here, it's called Letter to the American Church. And he makes a very compelling comparison of, of the church in America today with the church in Germany in the year 1930. And the point he makes is the church in Germany around the year of 1930 just went to sleep and checked out. And became, people went to apathy and stopped connecting together. And it led the, the, the church's disappearance in that culture, the weakening of that church in that culture, opened up the gates wide for the worst kind of evil the world could ever see. And he talks about how that's where we are today. That's where we are today is, 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 is the church just, just kind of goes to this apathetic place and believers just kind of step away. It's not good. It's not good. We, this is a call. This is a call. I am so... I have such urgency about this. Again, this is not what I normally do with these videos. I have such urgency to call the church back to being the church that Christ called us to be. I have such urgency to call believers back 
to participating in the body of faith to what Christ called us to be. There is so much at stake, all eternity is at stake, and really the future of our society and our culture is at stake. Jesus started the church to lead the way, and I believe that a healthy culture runs through a healthy church, and if we're not that, we're in deep, deep trouble. So I'm calling the church back. I'm calling perhaps you back. We need to be together and growing and worshiping and, and moving ahead with great faith, with great faith. Listen, this coming Sunday, I'm going to be teaching on courage. I'm going to be teaching on what it really means to live with courage because we need a lot of courage in the days we're living in. And uh, I'd love to see you there so we can be filled up with that courage and be all that Christ has called us to be. Father God, I pray for those hearing this message. I pray for those not hearing this message. I pray for your church. I pray for a revitalization of believers. Lord, there's so much at stake. There's so much at stake for our culture. There's so much at stake for individuals because all eternity hangs in the balance. Raise up your church. Re-inspire your people to great things, to selfless living, to lives that are lived beyond oneself. And as you call us back, we praise you and thank you for the courage and the strength and the wisdom and the gifts you give us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.